Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. It is such a delight and such an absolute privilege to be here. I actually consider this the greatest church on the planet. I consider your parents, the, your parents, your spiritual parents, your pastors, the greatest pastors on this planet. The most powerful voices of encouragement and wisdom and direction and inspiration, without a shadow of a doubt, have been through your pastors, pastors Jürgen and Leanne. And uh, God has just blessed us in giving them to us as friends. And we, were, we ministered together like 25 years ago at youth ministry in, in Sydney at Oxford Falls. And then uh, you guys came over here and we were going to come over here, but then God had other plans. So we're over there, but our hearts are over here and we, we love you guys. We have so many beautiful friends in this church and, and Kayla and Matt are two of those. And I wanted to thank Dr. Matt tonight, but I'm not going to because he's not here. <laughs> So Kayla, thank you so much for having us here tonight. We love your church. You, you run this campus so beautifully. And somebody should tell Dr. Matt that if he took some supplements and got a good chiropractor, that his system would be aligned, there'd be no subluxation, everything would flow, there would be health in his body, and he'd be able to lead with power and authority. But not tonight. We got... Summer and Mark over here, two of our dearest friends for more than 25 years since back in Sydney that we grew up together and had a whole lot of fun together. And, and I know Beaver and Gabriella are here and Mark and Audrey. Hey, actually, did anybody like the drummer that played the first song? He was all right. He goes okay. Can you guys come up here for one second? This is my beautiful wife, Melissa, my son, Noah, my Ella, who's my daughter. She's, she's my favourite favorite daughter, and this is Zachary. So uh, this is my beautiful family that God's blessed me with. Next month would be married 27 years. So uh, as Jürgen says, who said it wouldn't last? And uh, yeah, we, we, just, we just love it here. And who was here on Sunday, obviously for Vision Sunday with Dr. Matt? It was absolutely Phenomenal, and he was saying, if you, if you want to get vision, get the word on the inside of you. If you want a vision for your life, if you want a vision for 2024, just get more of the word on the inside of you. And uh, I just wanted to read John 1, 1 to 5. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. In the Word is life. In the Word is light. In the Word is our empowerment to overcome in life. You are going to succeed in 2024. God has already gone before you, and He says, I am working all things together for your good. So if it's not good now, just know that God is still working for you. And in Isaiah 64, it says, God works for those that wait for Him. Can I encourage you this year, 2024, wait on God. Wait in the Word. Wait in His presence and let Him go before you. The Bible says that He's a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our path. That, that, that we plan out our ways, but God orders our steps. I believe God is ordering steps in this room tonight that if you will let go and let God, He will do more than you could ever dream or imagine. Amen. So I'm going to be praying for things quite, quite soon. I'm going to be praying for miracles. People are going to be healed in this room tonight. People are going to be set free in this room tonight. Our God is a miracle working God. Our God is the God of the impossible. There's nothing he can't do. There's nothing he won't do. So I don't know how your years started, but I know how it can end. And I, and I don't know how your days started, but I know how the, this night can end. And it can end with a miracle. And I, and I love what Pastor Alex was saying about being expectant. When you come to the house of God, 
You, you position yourself in the presence of the king. And miracles are possible. So I know there's people that anxiety is going to be broken off your life. There's actually somebody here and you've started having really bad anxiety attacks this week. And God told me clearly that you used to have them in the past. You got some breakthrough, but the devil is coming and he's trying to derail you. He's trying to take you off course, but God is going to set you free. Who is that person? I would actually love to pray for you right now. You started having anxiety attacks this week. If it's you, just run forward. Come on, bold, confident, let's go. Let's get some miracles. I hate the devil. The devil is a liar and a thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But our God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Amen. Come on, just come forward. Come bold. God is going to do a work. He is going to be glorified in the mighty house of God. Amen. You just close your eyes, lift your hands. In Jesus' name, be free. There are people right now watching online and God just spoke to me and said there are, there are two, maybe three people that are suffering with this with anxiety that is gripping you and holding you bound. Put your hand on your chest right now and say, Jesus, I thank you. You've healed me. You've set me free. And I tell you, by the power of God, you'll be free right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. So we're following up from Vision Sunday and I was thinking this through and what I've come to realize is that most people don't actually have a lack of vision for their future. They have a lack of separation from their past. And their past is the very thing that's holding them bound. You see, God says, I am doing a, behold, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I'm doing, will you let God do a new thing in your life this year? Will you let God move like he hasn't moved before? Will you let God move in areas of your life that you've, you've held off? And you've held back, God, you can touch me here, but I got, I got this. I'm, I'm okay with this. I just feel like God's saying, let me in. Let me, let me, let me do what I want to do for you. Because, yeah, you've got dreams and you've got visions. But what you need to understand, my plans, my ways are not like your ways. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. My, my plans for your life, my thoughts for your life are far greater than you could ever dream of. But somebody has to let go of the past. Somebody has to let go of the old ways. And what does the Bible say? It says, anybody that's in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And you know what? You're, you're a part of Awakened Church, so there's no lack of vision. There, there, there's no lack of cause. You are, you are going to be running hard. You're going to, but we got to let go of the past. Yesterday doesn't matter. We, we, need, to, we need to be moving towards tomorrow. And I love what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 3. He says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining towards what is ahead, I press towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. So let's break some chains tonight. Like I said, the, the, the devil is a liar and a thief. He is a liar and a thief. He wants to destroy your world, but Jesus wants you free. And I love what Hebrews 12 says. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us cast off every weight, sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race set before us looking unto Jesus. Let's do 2024 looking unto Jesus. Let's, let's lay some things down. Let's let go of some things and let's look to Jesus. Why don't you just make a commitment? You know what? Throughout the 365 days of 2024, I'm going to look to Jesus. You know what I've learned in the last 30 odd years? The more I look to Jesus, the more I, the, I, I start to look like Jesus. The more the reflection of Jesus manifests in my life. And so often we want to do life in our own strength and in our own plans. And, but Jesus says, just, just look to me. What, what are the scriptures says? I lift my eyes to the hills, to where my help comes from. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. So when you need some help and some breakthrough and some strength and some empowerment in 2024, why don't you just look to Jesus? Amen? So I want to ask you a question tonight. What do you want? What do, what do you want? Because the Bible says it's God's good pleasure to give you. God's not withholding. So in Mark 10, 46, it says this. It says, then they reached Jericho. And as Je Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. And when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. 
And when Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. And came to Jesus. He threw off his coat, his form of identification. He, he, he threw off comfort. He threw off security and came to Jesus. That might be a word for somebody here tonight. What can you let go of and come to Jesus? What are you holding on to that's stopping you getting to Jesus? What's the thing that you're comfortable in? So, so often we're comfortable in what we've known for a long time, what we walk out daily. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. And he came to Jesus and Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? He came to Jesus, and then Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus is so good. <clears throat> He's so merciful. He's so loving. He wants you free. Yeah. Yeah. He wants you free. What do you want? What are you willing to let go of? My rabbi, the blind man, said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. The first thing I'd say as we read this is that faith speaks. Don't just hold your visions. Don't just hold your dreams on the inside. What do you want? Have you told God? Have you, have you verbalized it? Have you prophesied towards your future? Have you declared what 2024 is going to look like? Or are you just acquiescing to what's always been? What are you speaking over the year? And as we read this passage, we see that Bartimaeus was blind. That was evident. He had deficit in his life. No sight, no vision. And we can all be like that at times. There's deficit that's evident in our lives. But Jesus was less interested in Bartimaeus' condition and more interested in his conviction. What do you want? He knew he was blind. He could see he was blind. He called him out. I feel like God might be calling some people out tonight. What do you want? Because your deficit is evident. If, if not just to you, to others as well. But what do you want? Do you want breakthrough? Do you want freedom? Do you want life and life more abundantly? Because it's available for you tonight through Jesus Christ. You know, and Helen, Helen Keller once said, the only thing worse than having no sight is having no vision. <clears throat> so we're starting afresh. There's a blank slate. We've got a whole year ahead of us. I'm going to ask you again, what do you want? And have you told God? Proverbs 16, 3, it says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. What I love about this scripture, though, is that the interesting thing is that Bartimaeus had heard about Jesus, but he hadn't yet heard from Jesus. It wasn't until he heard from Jesus that he entered into breakthrough. He'd heard about Jesus. This Jesus is coming along. He could heal you. You may have heard about Jesus, but he wants you to get close. The Bible says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So as we draw near to him and he comes close to us, we, we hear from Jesus, not just about Jesus. I, I, you know, I, I was raised Catholic. I was raised, raised religious. And I liked Jesus. The Jesus I heard about, I liked. But that was it. There was no power. There was no connection. There was no relationship. I just liked Jesus. But it wasn't until I came and gave my life to Christ and surrendered my life to him that I encountered him for real. And then I heard from Jesus. And that changed everything. And again, God is so good and so loving and so merciful. He wants to speak to you directly tonight. He wants to speak right into the middle of your situation and your circumstance and say, it's all going to be okay. I got the answer. I will carry you through this. I am the one that heals you. But the, you know what I love about God? He knows who he is. He says, heck, I'm the God that heals you. You know, in Jeremiah 32, it says, I'm the Lord, the God of all creation. Is there anything too hard for me? He knows there's nothing too hard for him. He's, he's just saying, do, do you, what do you want? Are you, are you willing? Are you desperate? Will you come to me? Will you, will you pull miracles from me? 
because I want to give them to you. I want to touch you. I want to set you free. Why don't you talk to Jesus tonight? Perhaps for the first time, maybe for the first time in a long time. But why don't you say, God, you know what? This year's yours. I need you close. I want to hear your voice. God, speak to me. I don't want to just hear about you. You've got the greatest preachers on the planet that grace this platform. You will hear the word of God. You will hear about God. But that's just the starting point. God wants you to hear him. He wants you to hear his voice clearly. And come on, let's give God a hand clap. Because we don't do religion here. We do relationship. Religion doesn't mind you hearing about Jesus. It just doesn't want you hearing from Jesus. And it's good when somebody says to me, you can be healed. But when God says, I'm going to heal you. I can hold on to that. I can stand on that. I can walk through the storm. I can walk through the chance that, you know what? I heard from God. And I believe God wants to speak to people tonight. Your, your relationship with Jesus is far more important than your vision for 2024. And you need vision. But your relationship with Jesus is far more important because his plans and his purposes are to bless you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. The Bible says if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So when you hear from Jesus and do what he says, you'll eat the good of the land. You'll walk blessed. You'll walk favored. You'll walk in the abundant life that he has for him. So if you, you seek him, you'll find him this year. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray very soon. There's somebody here and you, you've, you've busted your knee. And I don't know if you're waiting on surgery or you've had surgery and it's painful and it's limiting. God's about to heal you. You're going to have heat, heat in your knee. Just come forward, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. What's your name? Leah. Leah. I think we've met before. Probably. Yeah. Just lift your hands. Be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please. What is your name, sir? Eric. Eric. Lord, touch Eric. Thank you, Lord. God is healing more than your knee. He's healing your heart. And God is a God that restores. And He is going to restore to you the years that you lost through something that was done to you. But peace is about to enter your heart. Joy is about to enter your spirit and bubble up. It is a new day. And yes, we're on a calendar we mark. End of one year, beginning of a new year. I'm telling you, it's a new season for you. It's a season of blessing. It's a season of joy. And it's a season of peace. And I feel like in your world, greater than material possessions or anything else, the thing you value the most is peace. You're about to enter into a season of peace and contentment. You, you, you'll sit by a beach and st God will start filling you, start speaking to you, start revealing and showing you things. There's going to be, there's going to be people that come and apologize to you and said, I did you wrong. It was me. God is a God that vindicates. And I tell you, it's exciting. The season ahead for you is exciting. Get ready. I'll pray for his ankle in a minute. How's your knee? Sorry? 100%. I'm here to tell you tonight, there's a payoff for believing in Jesus. And that's the blessing and favour of God on your life. You need to understand, you need to realise this year is blessed. This year is, for, expect blessing. Expect God's favour. Expect breakthrough. Expect expansion. Expect God to do more than you've ever expected before. Because He's the God that does exceedingly abundantly, more than we could ask or imagine. Someone says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked, sits in the way of sinners, stands in the way of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He'll be like a tree planted by streams of living water that yields its fruit in season. Whatever he does shall prosper. What do you delight in? What are you delighting in? What are you walking in? What are you believing for? Let God in. Let God do what he wants to do and here's the deal, your, your life may not be great right now. Let's start again today. First day of 2024, right now. 
Let's go. I'm, I'm in a brand new year. I'm in a brand new day. Again, what do you want? And I ask you this, not what did you want? What do you want now? What do you want now for your marriage? What do you want now for your family? What do you want now for your finances? What do you want now for your future? So many people hope, desire, wish, need, but they never ask. God wants you to ask. God wants you to cry out. Jeremiah 33 says, This is what the Lord says, He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it. The Lord is His name. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Call to me and I will answer you. He's close. He loves you. There's a saying that God is most glorified when man is most alive. I feel like God is calling the church into a new day. There is a river that's gaining intensity, getting deeper, getting wider. And God, He said, just get on in. If you'll get in the river, if you'll get in the flow, if you'll find and allow the rhythm of the Holy Spirit and lead you and guide you through this year, you will experience the miraculous. Amen. I, I truly believe the church looks like what we get a vision for, petition heaven for, speak into being and pull down by faith. That's the church. That's the future of the church. I shared it before, but Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come to and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I would love to give anybody here an opportunity before we pray for some things to cry out to God, the God who loves, the God who forgives, the God who restores, the God who heals. I'd love you to cry out to Him tonight. Say, I give you my life. Greatest decision I ever made. 32 years ago was to give my life to Jesus Christ. And life's not perfect and I'm far from it. But every day, if I will position myself and, and lean in and listen, He will speak to me. God wants to speak to some people here tonight and we are gonna pray for a whole lot of things and I know God is gonna move powerfully very shortly. But if you're here and you've never asked Jesus Christ into your life or if you've known Christ but walked away, life's, life's tough. We go through seasons and twists and turns and it's challenging. We go through a, a COVID season and my brother gets cancer and after two years of battling as hard as he, he dies. And then we come out the other side of that and then there's, there's some attacks and there's some challenges and, and life is tough, but God is real. He's ever present. He's, he's like one that sticks closer than a brother. The Word says He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I know that He wants to encounter some people here tonight. So can I ask everybody just to, just to close your eyes. And i just lo simply like to ask you to, to raise your hand. We're all going to pray this prayer, but I'd love you to raise your hand if you say, you know what, at the beginning of a new year, I want to start fresh. I want to enter into relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to ask Jesus to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Or I want to come back. You know what, I've... I've walked a journey, but I'm coming back. If that's you, would you just lift your hand tonight and say, Christian, that's me. Thank you. Is there anybody else? You just say, yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All across the building, thank you. You just boldly and confidently say, you know what? I want to walk with Christ. I want to know His love. I want to know forgiveness. I want to be set free. I want, I want to walk closely with God in 2020. Is there anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask us just to stand to our feet? Is that okay? I, I would just love to pray a really simple prayer. Maybe the team could come. Would you repeat this prayer after me? Would you say, Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for dying in my place and setting me free. God, thank you for sending your son. I receive salvation now. Thank you, Lord. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com. 
or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.